Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Project Shinobi video. Um, as you can see, we've got the cylinder head and the barrels off in the last episode, um, so the pistons are hanging uh, out in the air. Um, what we're going to try and do now is carry on with the teardown effectively. Um, I'd like to be in a position where we can actually split the crank cases. Whether we get to that in this video, I'm not sure. But we'll definitely get the pistons off. We'll remove some of the other ancillary, uh, ancillaries. We've still got the starter motor on, for example. This is like a, um, this is supposed to be like a, a, an anti-vibration damper. It's got like a foam thing. I don't really know how it works, but um, yeah, it's just like a plate with a rubber, um, like a rubber wedge underneath. Um, we'll take the rear um, engine mount rubbers out because they need to come out before we can split the cases. Uh, and I think that's about it. And then we'll be, um, it'll be a case of turning it over, um, whipping the oil pan off, and then uh, we'll be in a position to split them, I reckon. Um, we've still got the water pump uh, housing on, actually, so we'll get that off as well. Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, st get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to start with is piston removal. Um, but before we do, I'm just going to move the uh, rear chain uh, guide out of the way because it is kind of sitting there flapping around and um, we don't want it to get broke. And it's simply a case of removing this like that. that's what it pivots on and then it will just slide out like so so I'll keep that again just checking it for wear really but it looks in good good order uh, this little area here is where the tensioner engages I'll put that down there and there we are that's uh, that's that off now we can uh, we can have a look at the pistons themselves now to get them out there's a little it's like a little circle it's just a spring ring just inside here and all we have to do is lever it out like like so now these are a one shot deal once these are removed they're to be thrown away and then hopefully the pistol uh, the, the wrist pin will come out sometimes they get a bit stuck and obviously i've got slippery hands so that doesn't help <laughs> there we go so that's number one piston off and it's wrist pin um, now a couple of things to note on here the piston needs to uh, be marked up what I'll do um, I will just place them into the last layer of the box um, as you can see it fits in there quite nicely uh, with, its um, with its gudgeon pin and um, that'll keep it nice and safe now the piston, yeah, the piston has to go back into the slot for, into the cylinder from where it, where it came. Um, obviously, all of these piston rings we're going to replace. Um, but one thing to note on here, there's a little, just a little circle. Um, hopefully, you can see that through the carbon. A little circle just there. That indicates the front. If you look at the other three, they're all the same. They've all got the little dots on, pointing forwards. So that's, um, yeah, if we don't want to put them in that way, they've got to go in that way. Okay, so that's number one in there. The, the, uh, as I said before, the circlips get replaced. Um, now what I need to do is the other three pistons. That's piston number four. They're all in good order. Um, absolutely no damage to them whatsoever. There, there is a bit of coking on the top, but that will clean off. I'll, um, I'll get all of that off with a light Scotch Bright in and uh, a trip through the parts washer, and they should, uh, they should come back 
quite uh, quite nice. Look, they'll probably look the same colour as that. You know, they they'll look uh, like they do around the edges. So let's get the other two off, and then I'll uh, I'll bring it back in, and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, that is all four pistons removed. What we're going to do now is carry on uh, removing the parts we need to remove. Start a motor, this vibration damper, and then these uh, rear engine mounts. Start a motor, just held in with two 8mm eight eight mil bolts. And a load of cobwebs. <clears throat> the vibration damper first actually in order to get that out because I think we need to be able to pull it back this way to get it out of the crankcase. Yeah I'm not sure how this how this anti-vibration damper works. I'm guessing it, it does something to do with the harmonics but I guess it works and I imagine Kawasaki put a little bit of R&D into, uh, into it. Even the uh, even the bolts have got little rubber grommets underneath. I can uh, I can only assume it somehow dampens the resonance. there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever um, yeah so that to one side with its bolts let's have another look at this start motor all right there we go this seal I think was gripping it there is a seal there obviously because there is uh, is inside the oil uh, area of the bike so obviously we don't want uh, we don't want an oil leak so um, that will, I mean, that's minging, it'll clean up again. Um, but it did work, so we'll put that again to one side. Right, let's move on. Now, the uh, rear engine mounts here, these are rubber and they don't feel like they want to move. Well, I mean, they have slightly, that gap's over, so slightly opened up. <sighs> But they don't really want to come out so I think what I'm going to have to do is pry them out and then what I'll do I'll, uh, I'll bring it back and then we'll continue one Now, um, obviously these are just rubber mounted and again, they look like they're in fairly decent condition. I'm not gonna, I don't think I need to replace those. Um, they do have like a, a steel sleeve down the center. But yeah, they look, they look in decent condition. So again, I'll, I'll retain them. Right, next we need to look at the, uh, the water pump housing, which is just here. I was ready to move all the blocks around. There we are. So, water pump housing looks like it's eight mil bolts. Uh, one, two, three. We'll probably get a little bit of fluid wee out as we undo them. Mm -hmm. 
two and they are different lengths. So let's pop all of them together, that will clean up again, there's a gasket in there that we'll be replacing. And here is our water pump. Now the water pump itself, if we twist it back around again. There we are, right if I spin the water pump you can see just here that this is driven off the clutch and obviously the oil pump um, will be the same um, incorporated into this mechanism as well. It'll all, it'll all be joined together inside which we, we will see once we, uh, once we get the cases apart. Anyway, right, now we are at a stage where we can flip the whole thing over because what we need to do next is take the oil pan off because some of the bolts joining the crankcases together are behind the oil pan. Right then, as you can see, we've uh, we've tipped her over and I've got her resting on a couple of blocks so that the piston, uh, the, the, the connecting rods aren't under any pressure. They're, they're not being leaned on and they're just hanging there naturally. Um, obviously when we turned it over, we did pee a little bit of oil out of the bench because there was still a little bit of residue left behind. Um, so uh, obviously I had to I have to get the um, some some rags and clear up a little bit. Right, what we're going to do here now is we're going to get this oil pan off. Now there's a lot of a lot of bolts holding this on. Um, these two here, uh, the they're fairing brackets, um, so we'll crack them first because they're actually covering up um, bolts anyway, and then spin them out, and then they will go to one side. And what I'll do, all of these bolts go into the tin, uh, the little Chinese tub. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're just going to go around, crack them all, crack them all off and then I'll just spin them out with a T-bar because it's quicker. And obviously, as you would expect, there is a gasket under here which will require replacement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's fourteen of them. So let's spin them all out. So much quicker with these T bars, I love them. And the last one, right, there we are, there's nothing now holding the sump on, apart from the gasket. So what I'll do, I'll grab a mallet and we'll give it a little tap. There's probably a few dowels in the room. Yeah, they give you little, little little protrusions which you can use to get it off but wh whatever you do just do not be tempted to jam a screwdriver in there because all you'll do is you'll damage it it's only soft okay, just 
putting up a bit of a fight. Right, what I'll do, instead of boring you to tears, I'll, um, I'll carry on messing around with this, get it off, and then we'll bring you back. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of sediment in the bottom of that. Um, yeah, so obviously that'll get a good, that'll get a good clean out. Let's pop that down there. And here we have the inside. Let's let's turn it around so we can uh, give you a better view. There we are. So, here we have the ore strainer. This is a breather. Um, that uh, is held in with a little, I don't know if you can actually even see it, there's a little hose clamp right down at the back. I um, don't know if you can see it or not. Um, but once we've uh, split the case, we're going to get to that. Here's the gearbox. Um, let's have a quick gander. At the gears now as I said before I never actually rode this bike when I picked it up um, so I don't actually know if the gearbox was any good but I can't see anything obvious um, certainly not on the certainly not on the input shaft anyway let's have a look at the output shaft now all the teeth seem to be in good order so this gearbox is actually okay and to be honest might actually just stick it on eBay once I've replaced it because I've, as I said before, I've got the Z1000 Z1000 transmission to go into this. So, um, so yeah, it'll uh, it'll be surplus. So here now you can see the um, the gear here that engages with the clutch boss um, here drives the water pump, as I said a moment ago, um, but goes through the oil pump as well. So that's that's what it's. Uh, that's that's how it's how it's um, arranged um, in the strainer. You can see there's a bit of gunk inside the uh, a little bit of gunk inside the oil strainer. We should be able to pop it off, but they do go a little bit brittle. So I'll have a I'll have a little tinker with that later. Okay, now now we've got the oil pan off. You can see here we've got six bolts that um, are either side of the crank, um, and then there's two on the outside. And you'll see again that they're numbered. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then out over this side, nine and ten. Um, those ten there are what um, bolt that basically hold the crank into position. And then there's a few more bolts which will be on the top side that um, hold the two halves of the crank case together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start splitting the cases. Exciting times! But uh, yeah, we'll get the uh, I'll get the oil strainer off first. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get amongst it. Okay, what I'm going to do next next stage is I do actually need to turn it over because I want to take the top bolts out of the crankcase first. There's 13 um, 13 bolts uh, arranged in a certain in certain positions on the top, which need to be removed before I remove any of these. But before I do that, I'm going to remove the strainer, which actually came off really really easy. I was expecting it to put up a bit of a fight, but it didn't. Um, and this here is the oil pressure relief valve. I'm just going <coughs> to remove that as well. And there we go. So that's the strain there, the pressure relief valve. The, um, this breather, I'm not too concerned about that. can stay there like that. Right, now what I want to do is I want to turn it over and move my wood inward so it sits on the the, uh, the, the the gasket face for the oil pan. So if I 
remove them in a bit. Right, so a little bit cumbersome at the moment. Let's just make sure that she's sitting okay. Yeah, she's fine. All right, let's move her forward a touch. And there we are, right. 13, uh, 10 mil volts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now these are all different sizes and um, you got a couple of options with that because um, they do need to obviously go back into the positions that they're removed from. Um, they're not all 10 mil actually, these two here are 13, so that's worth uh, bearing in mind, but um, the rest of them are all 10 mil in size. Um, get a bit of card or something, draw the pattern, put them in it, or draw on a whiteboard like that up there, um, the pattern that they go in, or if you've got a manual, just look at the manual because it does say in the manual where they, where they all go. So, let's crack them all. Some of them are really tight. Those two there felt. Uh, those two there felt like they cheered. Actually, I hope they haven't. No, they haven't. <laughs> just the way they let go. <sighs> yeah, some of these are really tight. Yeah, it felt like they're cheered, but they haven't as it goes. That was a little bit awkward to get into. Let's try that one. There's a lot of rubbish around this one that's preventing the Preventing the socket from sitting like all the rubbish coming off of it. Obviously, we don't want to round any off because that will just make our lives ultra difficult. So, let's get all that rubbish off. And there we go. I think that's all of the tens. Now we've just got the thirteens. They're not thirteens at all. I'm lying to you. They're twelve. So the two over the uh, top of the. Oh no, they don't want to come out. Let's have a. Oh right. I'll come back to them ones in a minute because they are bloody tight. And they're probably going to need a break about free them off. Just so leaving a bit of heat. And here you can see like the differences in differences in lengths. To be fair, most of them give you a good indicator as to how long they're going to be anyway, because you can see where it screws into. Um, but yeah, if you're unsure, just keep a note or look at the manual, like most sane people do. This one's got a cable clamp on. And there we 
go. Right, let's get a. We'll go for a little round one this time. Although we don't want to fit in there. No, they won't. Typical. Right, let's get our all of our bolts. And that is it. Right, these two here, I'm going to uh, I have to get a breaker bar and I might even have to bang a bit of heat into them to get them out because they were so tight. But I'll, um, I'll get those two out and then we'll bring you back and then we'll be looking at turning the crankcases over to uh, get at the bottom bolts. Right, the, uh, those two bolts, I've got them both out. Um, as you can see, there's quite a lot of silicon uh, sealant on the end. Obviously, that's from when the two halves of the case have been jointed at the factory. Um, and I think that was probably what was stopping them coming out. But they're out now, and they came out. A little bit of heat um, with a blowtorch and a little breaker bar. Actually made fairly light work of them. They weren't that, uh, it wasn't that dramatic at all. Right then, now what we need to do is we need to turn it over. I think the best thing to do first uh, in fact, yeah, the f what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to split the cases, that's what we're going to do, we are going to do that. Um, so, spin her over again, move the pieces of wood out. These eight, uh, sorry, these ten. These have to come off in a similar, similar sort of way to what the cylinder head did. Obviously, in the reverse order that they were uh, installed. So start at ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, quarter turn at a time until they're all out. So yeah, we'll um, we'll get on with that next. And I believe that these are going to be twelves as well. Yeah, they are. So quarter turn. Tight, please. That's those two. stays holding the crankcases and obviously trying to get you in the position where you can see what I'm doing as well. In fact if we swap round um, I reckon we might be better off that way. Let's try that. Yeah there we go. Oh, that's better and you can see what's going on now as well. Actually done. I just felt it. I actually sliced my finger on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the edging case. Oh. Yeah, these are these are so tight. These are actually miles tighter than the cylinder head bolts. Oh, there we go. Oh, right. That's eight and seven. What we need next 
is an extension. Uh, six. These inner ones are a bit easier because it's, it's you're not trying to spin, it's not spinning around the uh, not spinning the engine around as much. Not to mention the fact that these are ones that have been well lubricated because they're inside. The outer ones put more of a fight. So that was four and three, two. And the last one. Oh, there we go. Whew. Right. That's all ten cracked off first. First quarter turn. Should now be able to just go around another quarter turn on each one. And just keep doing that. Until such time as they're no longer the bolts aren't actually doing anything, so I can then just spin them out at seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and seven again. Yeah, here we go. Now there. Yeah, they're at a stage now where they're not really doing anything. Yeah, they're now loose, so I can now spin them all out. So, here we go. Oops. Yeah, not doing anything that long. Here we go. There's a washer underneath each one as well. It'll be sealing washer is like a copper washer because obviously it'll leak, they'll leak oil otherwise the ones on the outside that is i don't know if there's a washer on the ones on the inside but it won't be there for sealing purposes One thing you'll notice as well is that all of these bolts have got pink on the heads. The inner ones are actually shorter as well. There we go. Right, that is the main bolts uh, on the crank. The last thing we need to remove now is the 10 mil ones on the outside. There's seven of them. Uh, had I remembered, I would have done this before the crank bolts, but I didn't. Uh, 
one with the cable clamp on. There. Right, spread all them out. And there we are, right. That is all of the bolts holding the two halves of the crank case together. Now we've got the challenge of trying to split them. It's gonna be a challenge because they're not gonna to wanna to come apart that easily. Um, here's the split line just here. See the split line just there. It runs all the way along here to there and there. Um, so that's where we're looking at. It's basically across this plane. So when we take it off, um, if we get this, leave it this way up, take the bottom the bottom crank off, uh, crank case off, it will leave the output shaft of the gearbox in the lower half, the crank shaft in the lower half, but the water pump, the shift drum, and uh, the, what else we got? In fact, both in fact both the input and output shafts will stay in the bottom half. It's just the shift drum and selectors that will come out with the uh, the bottom half. So. What we need to try and do now is obviously split these, and this is going to be an epic, I reckon. Um, probably, probably more difficult than the old pan, but then I might be surprised. You never know. Oh, actually, look, <laughs> the split already. How easy was that? That was actually a darn sight easier than I anticipated. So, what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a little bit of room to put this down. Once I've uh, got it off, the uh, blocks of wood there like so, and then I lift her off. There are dowels in here. The only thing stopping us here is this breather pipe. There we go. Right, there we are. Right. If I put that down on the box of wood. Which isn't big enough, but you, you know, you give yourself space and you fill it, don't you? Okay, what we can do here is now remove the chain because that projection isn't stopping us. This is an endless chain. Um, what we'll do, we'll have a look at it, make sure it's still in spec, and if it's if it's okay, we'll we'll, uh, we'll use it um, because there's no point in replacing something that doesn't require it. Now, um, what I do want to look at here before we finish the episode is the main bearings. Uh, these main bearings actually look really, really good. There's minimal wear, but there's no copper showing whatsoever. They're, they all look pretty decent. Uh, the selector forks, there's none that are bent. Um, there, is a, there is spec for these, um, and that will obviously need to be observed. Um, yeah, the, the, these running, uh, these have bearings that run in them, as you can, as you can see, there's bearings that run in these. So whilst they actually do look a bit scuffed, I'm not bothered about those. Uh, the crank, um, yeah, the crank looks, the crank looks really nice as well. I don't think there's any need for a re-grind on that sucker, which is good news. Uh, obviously we haven't taken the con rods off yet, so we don't know what the big ends are like, but so far so good. Now. Yeah, the uh, the gearbox, as you can see, in fact, um, 
yeah, fact, I've got a set of pliers to hang, I'll get that off later. But yeah, the gearbox, the gearbox looks really, really good. There's a seal on the end here, an oil seal. Uh, there it is, as you can see. Uh, but we are, uh, we are going to be replacing this gearbox. Um, with a with a Z1000 transmission, so yeah, it'll uh, it'll all be good. Anyway, guys, I think what we'll do, um, we'll leave this episode here now because we've done quite a bit today, um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll look at the transmission, the crankshaft, the give, uh, you know, the shifters, the shift forks, all that good stuff in the next episode um, as we start to take out the you know the, we'll take out the oil pump, water pump, all that good stuff, and the shift mech as well. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this. It's starting to get a little bit exciting now. This is this is the cool stuff uh, that we like to uh, that we like to mess around with. Hope you enjoyed it, as I said, um, and I will see you all again for the next episode of Project Shinobi. Take care, guys. Bye bye now.